hi in this video let's discuss about krebs cycle it's also called as tricarboxylic acid cycle or citric acid cycle right so this krebs cycle it strictly occurs only in aerobic conditions and 60 to 70 percent of atp being generated is uh, because of this Krebs cycle. So the source of majority of energy currency of the cell is Krebs cycle and also this Krebs cycle there is basically on an overview conversion of acetyl coa to carbon dioxide and water that is there is oxidation of acetyl coa in the process there is not only catabolism but also anabolism because various substrates which are being formed in this Krebs cycle they act as uh, important metabolites which have their own individual metabolic pathways for example if you observe here the citrate which is being produced in the part of this cycle can be used for synthesis of fatty acids as well as steroids and coming to succinyl coa it is essential for synthesis of porphyrins and heme and whereas oxaloacetate it's essential for synthesis of pyruvate and glucose and coming to oxalosuccinate and alpha ketoglutarate these are essential for synthesis of various non-essential amino acids right so the intermediates which are being formed here they are very essential for formation of various biological molecules very important biological molecules for that matter so this cycle is considered to be amphibolic so it is both catabolic as well as anabolic in nature right so that's very important and most importantly this Krebs cycle takes place within mitochondrial matrix right so that's again an important point here because the rest of the cycles which are discussed so far glycolysis HMB shunt do take place in cytoplasm whereas this Krebs cycle occurs in mitochondria right and now let's first look into the cycle important aspects pertaining to cycle and then we'll elaborate on various essential points pertaining to this cycle right so before that i would like to share one uh, small information pertaining to this cycle the cycle was introduced by krebs way back in 1930s and initially when he submitted his research paper to nature journal it was rejected Later, he published the same article. Uh, I mean, he got he submitted the same article to another journal called Enzymology, and it was published there. And eventually, he got Nobel Prize way back in 1950s for his work on Krebs cycle. And legend says that he used to carry that rejection letter, a rejection letter which was given to him by Nature regarding his article publication. He used to carry that rejection letter and he used to encourage researchers and ask them not to get demotivated if their research is uh, not accepted by any reputed journal so that's how his orientation used to be and eventually he secured Nobel Prize for his contribution towards Krebs cycle in physiology and you can compare this Krebs cycle or TCA cycle as an important central metabolic pathway it can be compared to that of an important junction traffic junction where many roads come and communicate or join at that junction area so as i said prior there are many intermediates which are being formed and they lead to their own individual metabolic cycle so this forms an important central metabolic pathway and this is considered as an open cycle because the metabolites which are being formed can participate in other reactions as well it's not closed it's an open cycle right now let's look into the details of this uh, citric acid cycle and then let's try to elaborate on various important points as you can see here acetyl coa so a citric acid cycle starts here by combination of acetyl coa and oxaloacetate or by condensation of acetyl coa and oxaloacetate so acetyl coa it's a two carbon uh, molecule whereas oxaloacetate it's a four carbon molecule so acetyl coa combines with oxaloacetate to form citrate in presence of the enzyme citric synthase right and for this coenzyme a is essential right and also you can see here once citrate is formed there is also formation of isocitrate oxalosuccinate right so these compounds they are uh, containing uh, three carboxylic groups hence this cycle is also called as tricarboxylic acid cycle so as you can see here citrate gives up water in presence of enzyme aconitase leading to formation of cis aconitate and this cis aconitate gets converted to isocitrate with release of water in presence of enzyme aconitase again and once this isocitrate is formed 
many important reactions do occur here. In presence of the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase, there is formation of oxalosuccinate and simultaneously there is conversion of NAD into NADH, right? So this is very important. So here we have a six carbon molecule. So all these are six carbon molecules and at the level of oxalosuccinate, in presence of isocitrate dehydrogenase, there is release of carbon dioxide leading to formation of a five carbon alpha ketoglutarate. And this five carbon alpha ketoglutarate in presence of dehydrogenase enzyme again leads to formation of succinyl CoA and simultaneously in the process there is release of carbon dioxide and also conversion of NADH to NADH plus right so that's very important and once the succinyl CoA is being formed there is a substrate level phosphorylation right so leading to formation of a GTP and this GTP is eventually converted to ATP in presence of the enzyme nucleoside diphosphate kinase right so eventually there is a substrate level phosphorylation here in presence of coenzyme A and this succinate which is being formed is acted upon by succinate dehydrogenase leading to formation of fumarate and in this process one FADH is being synthesized and this fumarate releases water in presence of fumarase leading to formation of malate and this malate in presence of dehydrogenase again leads to formation of oxaloacetate. So if you observe here oxaloacetate which is being used up in this reaction is again being replenished or regenerated right so it's a continuous cycle and at the last step where malate dehydrogenase acts there is again formation of NADH so if you observe the entire cycle in those reactions where there is involvement of dehydrogenase there is synthesis of NADH or FADH and also there is a thiokinase leading to substrate level phosphorylation between succinyl CoA and succinate right so this is very important and once you understand this so there are few important points to notice here. If you observe here, we have various important irreversible reactions being controlled by three enzymes. So we have citric synthase. So this reaction is irreversible. And also we have isocitrate dehydrogenase, which is another irreversible reaction. And finally, we have alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, right? So these three enzymes catalyze irreversible reactions and these are considered to be very important. And coming to citric synthase, it is considered as a pace setting reaction because this initiates the pace or maintains the pace of reaction depending upon the availability of estyl CoA and oxaloacetate. So the greater amount of estyl CoA and oxaloacetate would obviously stimulate or initiate or activate citric synthase. Whereas excess amounts of citrate through feedback inhibition would inhibit this citric synthase, right? So these are some of the initiators and activators pertaining to citric synthase. And coming to the next enzyme that is isocitrate dehydrogenase, as you can see here, this isocitrate dehydrogenase is inhibited by excess amount of NADH or ATP, whereas it is stimulated by ADP. Right, so these are some of the initiators, activators pertaining to isocitrate dehydrogenase. And coming to alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, in this scenario, the inhibitors mainly are NADH as well as ATP. So when there is excess amount of energy, obviously there is feedback inhibition leading to deactivation or inhibition of these dehydrogenases. Right, so these are some of the important enzymes and also various initiators and activators pertaining to these enzymes and as I mentioned previously this is an amphibolic cycle the reason why I said is because estyl CoA eventually is being converted into carbon dioxide and water and in the process there is oxidation right so this is called as oxidation reaction and also simultaneously as I said before there are production of various intermediaries which lead to biosynthesis of several other molecules for example as I mentioned previously, citrate would lead to biosynthesis of fatty acids and steroids. Whereas succinyl CoA would lead to biosynthesis of heme and also porphyrin. Whereas oxaloacetate is essential for biosynthesis of glucose and alpha ketoglutarate is essential for biosynthesis of various non-essential amino acids, right? So this is a central metabolic pathway connecting various other metabolic pathways. That's very, very important. And now coming to the most important aspect that is ATP synthesis per one cycle of a Krebs. So usually, as you can see here, there is formation of one, 
2, 3 NADH, right? So coming to the number of ATP that are being generated. So there is formation of 3 NADH, right? And also there is formation of 1 FADH. So 1 FADH. And third, there is one substrate level phosphorylation leading to formation of GTP. This gets converted to ATP in presence of the enzyme nucleoside diphosphate kinase, right? So there is one ATP formation due to substrate level phosphorylation, right? So now let's count the number of ATP that are being generated per one molecule of estalcoe, that is one Krebs cycle. So as you can see here, each NADH contributes to 3 ATP, right? 3 ATP per NADH. Whereas 1 FADH contributes to 2 ATP. So 2 ATP per NADH. Sorry, it's FADH. Right? So the total number of ATP generated are 9 because 3 into 3, 9. And here 2 into 1, 2 ATP. And it's substrate level phosphorylation 1 ATP. So total number of ATP generated are 12. So this is very important. So 12 ATP are generated per one molecule of estalcoe, right? That's very important. So apart from this, if the question is pertaining to the number of moles of ATP being generated. So this is the number of ATP, right? So if we want to convert that into number of moles, remember the fact that 1 NADH contributes to 2.5 moles of ATP whereas 1 FADH contributes to 1.5 moles of ATP. So in this citric acid cycle as you can see here first one so we have 3 NADH so 3 into 2.5 moles of ATP because each NADH contributes to 2.5 moles of ATP there is formation of 7.5 moles of ATP from NADH and there is formation of 1.5 mole of ATP from FADH and because of substrate level phosphorylation there is formation of 1 mole of ATP. So the total number of uh, moles of ATP being generated include 7.5 1.5 plus 1 so it is 10 moles so in terms of moles 10 moles of ATP are being generated per estel coe molecule in one citric acid cycle in terms of number of ATP it's 12 ATP right hope it's clear and I'm just repeating this one NADH contributes to 2.5 moles of ATP and one FADH contributes to 1.5 moles of ATP right so these were asked in previous NBD papers and that's the reason why I'm trying to elaborate on these also and we have another important term called as anapleurotic reaction. So anapleurotic reaction means because this is an open cycle, the substrates can be involved in other synthesis of other important molecules or can be involved in other cycles as well. What happens is there can be depletion of various intermediaries and this cycle might cease to operate. So in those circumstances, there are certain reactions happening which leads to replenishment of the depleted substrates. So this process of replenishment is called as anapleurosis or anapleurotic reaction. Now coming to suicide substrate, fluorase state is considered to be a non-competitive inhibitor of the enzyme aconitase, right? So this fluorase state condenses with auxiliary state to form fluorocitrate. And this fluorocitrate, the cell metabolism deems it uh, to be toxic and there will be a cessation or discontinuation of this citric acid cycle, right? So there is actually suicide of the cell because this fluoroestrate even though this is non-toxic when it condenses with oxaloestrate forms fluorocitrate which is a toxic compound so as a result of which there is a suicide by the cell hence this fluoroacetate is called as suicide substrate right and to summarize 
Tricarboxylic acid cycle, also called as citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle, was discovered by Krebs way back in 1930s. And this is a central metabolic pathway. It's considered to be amphibolic because there is catabolism and also formation of various substrates which help in biosynthesis of various molecules, right? So, as you can observe here, there is a substrate level phosphorylation and also formation of 3 NADH1 FADH, right? So, that's very important. And also, we have various important enzymes such as citric synthase, isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and there are various factors which inhibit as well as activate these important enzymes catalyzing various irreversible reactions within the cycle. It's considered as an open cycle by the way and this strictly occurs in aerobic conditions unlike glycolysis which occurs even in anaerobic conditions, right? So even oxygen is not directly involved, various uh, molecules such as NAD, FAD, which are associated with electron transport chain, need oxygen for their replenishment or rejuvenation or regeneration, right? So it strictly occurs only under aerobic conditions. And most importantly, various metabolites or intermediaries which are being formed, such as citrate, oxalosuccinate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl coa and oxalate contribute to various biologically essential compounds, right? So that's very important. So there is heme synthesis, glucose synthesis, fatty acid synthesis from these important intermediary metabolites. And coming to the energy kinetics, so we have totally 12 ATP being formed from one acetyl coa molecule. In terms of moles, the number of moles being generated are 10, right? Because each NADH contributes to 2.5 moles of ATP and one FADH contributes to 1.5 moles of ATP. Right? So these are some of the important points pertaining to Krebs cycle. And also I mentioned about anaplerosis as well as suicide substrate. Right? Hope it's clear. Thank you.